Smell and Teeth. Well, it's been a very exciting week. We've had the Grammys this week and all the news about how wonderful home studios are and what can be achieved in a home studio with the wonderful news for Billie Eilish and how she did everything in a home studio and I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it exactly as you feel it. I will, I, I don't fucking care. <laughs> No, I mean, I'm going to give credit where it's due. I mean, Phineas, I think he's called, a brother. Um, uh-huh. Fair enough, he did produce it at home. I'll give him that. I mean, when you listen to it, you can hear how it's basically just a bunch of samples, mm-hmm. um, a couple of virtual instruments. And, and she doesn't bell out her words anyway. She kind of meanders along, doesn't she? Yeah. Uh, so it's not going to be difficult to record a vocal like that, especially when, you know, she can sing as well. But we've also got to take into account what happened after that because it went off to a mix engineer, which was Rob... Kinelski, was yeah, it? that's Can- the name. Rob, Rob Kinelski. Kinelski. So you've got Rob taking this track. Now, I'm sure he's going to be very modest about it and say, well, I didn't do an awful lot. Uh, but we say that, don't we? I mean, we've had mixes in. <laughs> I've spent three days on a mix, and when the client comes out, did you have to do a lot? Oh, no, 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 no. It's quite easy. <laughs> I spent three fucking days on it. It was a nightmare. <laughs> so I, th- I think he was being quite modest. I mean, particularly when you look at the list of what he had to do to it to mix it. Yeah, because I've read a couple of interviews from him and he actually lists some of the things he did to some of their music and it isn't just you know a 10 minute job no he didn't just push up a few (laughs) faders and go there you go mate i've mixed it for you no it it was quite a a hefty job that he did so it it may have been written mostly in a home studio but then he was sent off to a mixing engineer in a professional studio who could mix it and make it sound like a record Mm -hmm. Which is the big difference between home studios and professional studios. A home studio can create a great track. I'm not saying you can't. Yeah. You can release it on Beatport. If you want to create a track that you're going to smash the charts with, first of all, it's got to sound like a record. That means it's got to go to a pro studio. And but then, there's also a big other wheel behind it, isn't there? There isn't just the oh, oh. mix engineer and the mastering engineer. Oh, no, I mean, it, it went to this if, mix engineer. Then it went to a mastering engineer as well who did his part. Yeah. And then we've also got to look at the actual background of... Billie Eilish and, and Phineas. I mean, first of all, both their parents are actors and musicians. And she's a screenwriter. A mother is a screenwriter mm. for Netflix. Right. So, I mean, already you've, you've got kind of this, this contact here. I mean, if you look at Billie Eilish, she's actually featured in X-Men and Diary of a Wimpy Kid. She was in the, the crowd in those. But So they're not little... No, no, it's, it's not a little achievement, yeah, that. That's, that's quite a big good, achievement to say yeah. I've been in X-Men. You know what I mean? It's not a small film. <laughs> But also, um, she she was part of Platoon, and, and Platoon was this company that package artists and make them ready for major deals. I mean, it's big money to do yeah. this. And what they do is they look at the market, they analyse it, and then they build marketing strategies for you as an artist. So you've got that. You've got you've got a, a parents are, are actors and a mother's a screenwriter for Netflix. Yeah. You've got the fact that she's joined this Platoon, which package artists together. Then she got a publicist, and a publicist got her in touch with Chanel. Now, that's one hell of a fucking wow. feat for a publicist. Yeah. So that's a, you're not going to find that publicist on... on well, they're on, not going to be in Tesco, are they, at the till? No, they're not going to be on Google ad <laughs> services either, are they? No. I mean, this is very internal. Somebody who knows Chanel can get you in with them. So Chanel then shaped her image. And then we have uh, Justin Libliner from Darkroom Records, who then created her persona. So you've got to imagine, she's manufactured... She's a manufactured person by a a big team of people. And then her parents, or in particular her mother, got her music onto Netflix 13 Reasons Why. Now, you can't just write a track and expect it to appear on Netflix. No. So her mum has influenced it and got it into Netflix. And then also on top of that, you've got her team then that worked alongside Spotify and they promoted her and got her onto the, the Top Hits playlist. And then Apple came along. They bought Platoon... And then all of a sudden, she's featured on Apple Music's Up Next artist. So it, it's a whole package. And I think the problem is that we're having these bullshit stories thrown at us. Like, um, I recently did a talk at NAM yeah. for the Audio Engineering Society about the history of dance music. And I was saying there that when we look back at the history of dance music, we tend to think, oh, the music was simple. They did it in a bedroom at home. It was all bedroom made. Bullshit, it wasn't. If, if we look at the major players like Marshall Jefferson... He was signed to Trax Records, and Larry Sherman, who, uh-huh. who owned Trax Records, 
he got hold of professional studios like uh, Universal Studios in Studio A and he put Marshall Jefferson in with a, a major engineer called Richard Fairbanks. So it wasn't this homebrew thing that we think it was. The same with punk music, that the evolution of punk music wasn't a homebrew thing. Malcolm McLaren built the Sex Pistols and the punk movement so Vivian Westwood could sell clothes. So these are all manufactured things that are sold to us as, as a movement that is home-based, and it's not. And I think we need to stop with this bullshit and giving people who are sat at home studios the wrong impression that, oh, all you need is a home studio and you're going to be big and famous. No, you can't just write a record and throw it into the void and think, well, you know, Netflix is going to pick this up and I'm going to be famous next week. It doesn't work like that. You've got massive artist packages You've got studios, you've got teams of people working to make hit records. Of course, you can write something at home and get it on Beatport, but if you want that big artist stardom thing, there's teams of people behind it that are pushing you in certain directions, creating images. Everything is manufactured, and the fact is that we work behind the scenes, so we see these cogs yeah. turning, but most people just think, done in a home studio, I can do the same, I'm going to make millions. I think it's, it's very misleading, and I think some of it as well, um, and I might be, people might say I'm wrong. I think it's to do with the manufacturers as well. They lead, like, if you look at it, there's, say, a hundred studios they could sell their piece of kit to or their piece of software to, or they could sell it to a thousand home studios. Well, they're going to sell it to as many people as possible, so they're going to publicise these achievements and say it was all done at home. And if we look... At sales figures, I reckon, in six months' time, there will be a massive peak. But then there's also going to be a big peak, hopefully, on eBay, and we can buy lots of things cheap. Oh, <laughs> man, it will probably be second-hand copies of fucking Silent, won't it? Yes. <laughs> well, I bought a Silent Theory. I'm not writing music like him. I'm not. I'm not a hit. Uh, it's. Uh, I'm. I'm just. I'm just a bit tired of the the bullshit. And yeah, I do think it is marketing on behalf of manufacturers because they can push this now and go, oh look, you can do it all at home. Just buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy. This. He recorded her vocals on a, a Neumann TLM um, TLM. I, thought, I can't remember which one it was. Uh, a, a TLM three, I think it's something like that. Uh, he recorded it all, and so all of a sudden, you know, Neumann TLMs are going to sell like wildfire, yeah. and they're not great microphones for TLMs. It happened with um, some of the. The Roteland stuff when we looked at the history. Of oh, which some of them didn't they? They yeah, yeah, the TB three hundred three. Yeah, yeah, when Marshall Jefferson <laughs> produced DJ Pierre's track, it was Future's acid track for for DJ Pierre. He produced it, and then he actually gave DJ Pierre his TB three hundred three because he's pissed off with it. Yeah. And I'm not surprised. I had a TB three hundred three, and I got pissed off with it because the thing's <laughs> balmy to program, and it, it sounds like shit. I mean, I'm sure some people are going to go mad now, but I'm not a fan of the TB three hundred three. I never really have been. But yeah, he gave it to him and, and, and he said, oh, it's been, you know, I used it on yeah. acid tracks. And then all of a sudden, TB3 or 3s were everywhere and everyone was writing yeah. acid tracks. It, it's always the same when somebody mentions, I've used this in a track. Everybody and goes it, out it and fucking buys award, it. Yeah. And everybody wants to buy it and sound the same. Yeah. Um, and I also think we, we need to consider there's a very fine line between what people class as a home studio and a professional studio. And I'm going to say this because we have alter um, our studio and to me it's my home it is my home studio but I know if we have a client came in it's a professional studio and it is a professional studio but there's this fine line of definition when it rolls from being a true home studio where you're just sat on your bed and you're <laughs> using your laptop and you've got your speakers at the end or a more professional setup now, and, and I don't believe, and, and I might be putting myself out there a little bit, but I bet this young guy had an amazing setup. His bedroom isn't just his bedroom. Oh yeah, he, he, wouldn't, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't have had a bed behind him and a bit of washing, would he? You <laughs> fucking hell, no! I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's invested quite a bit. I know they all say, oh, three thousand dollars. No, I think it's a fucking hell of a lot more than well, that. Some reports say twenty odd. Well, this is it. I mean, you're getting <laughs> conflicting reports all over the fucking place, aren't you? Because everyone just makes this shit up. Um, the, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, do, where do we draw the definition between a home studio and a professional? I mean, I've, I've got a mate who has a studio in a garage, mm -hmm. um, and he's converted that garage into a studio. Now, he's spent about 30 or 40 grand in this garage. He still calls it a home studio, but you walk in there, and it's pretty much a professional fucking studio. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we've got a, a converted church here for, for the studio. And yeah. 120 grand worth of gear sat down there. Plus. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but we don't say that. <laughs> um, so, But the thing is, sometimes we have to work so late that this does become like a home. And it's like, so this is our home studio. So the definition is kind of blurred when people say, well, it's, a, it's my home studio. Well, where's your definition of home? And what pisses me off the most is, I watch one of these in in the studio with future music things, and and you watch some of these artists, and they're sat there on on this this tiny desk packed into a corner, with a couple of monitors, <laughs> their stuff right in the corner. They're not even firing off a part to get a proper stereo image, stuffed in a corner with a laptop open, and they're kind of like, yeah, well, I wrote this entire track like this, and there was one I watched which I can't mention, but I know he was full of shit because we ghost produced half that fucking track <laughs> for him. But he's there going, well, yeah, and I wrote it all at home. And this is the problem. We're lying to these kids and saying you can do it all we're at home. We're giving them false hope. Yeah, we are. We're saying you can do it all at home and you, you can be this mega star. Mm-hmm. And it's, no, it's not like that at all. You have to still understand that you can write tracks at home, you can get them on Beatport, but if you want these big hits, it, you've, you've got to go professional. You've got to make it sound like a record. I think it's... Um, you've got to have I contacts think, yeah, as well. What I was going to say is contacts and the destroying dreams and things... Talking of contacts, we've just been to Nam, which was awesome, I will say. In a way. <laughs> it was very loud. <laughs> yeah, we were queuing up to get our uh, our IDs, weren't yes. we? And uh, I've got an SPL meter on my phone. And You're such a geek. I, I am, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they were blasting out music, and I thought, that seems pretty loud, that, for an event. So I checked it, and it was like 106 decibels they were playing it out at. And it's like, that's a joke. What are you trying to do, sell us kit or deafen us? I reckon they probably, maybe they've got a contract with an audiologist. Maybe you think? I, maybe I should get a contract with them. Yeah, get a contract. <laughs> Air protection before you go in, 106 decibels, you'll be deaf soon. So um, we spent a lot of our time with the, the AES, which is the Audio Engineering Society, in their education section. And, um, you know, I mean, NAM is perfect. If you are into all the kit and you want to spend a lot of money and build your tiny home studio into a large home studio. <laughs> if you've got the money. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the, we, we spent a lot of our time uh, with the AES section, and uh, I'd just like to put my hands up in the air and say well done to a gentleman called Mark Fring who organises that event, but not just organises it, works his ass off <laughs> by moving stuff as well. So just, like, you know, Great achievement to You're him. just giving him a shout out. Yeah, like, I think he's, he's, he's a, a nice shout guy. He's a fantastic guy. I um, actually DJ'd there, didn't I? You did. A, 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 yes. The after awards yes. from the tech party, yeah? <laughs> Little do you know I can DJ too. <laughs> Man of many talents. <laughs> yeah, that's questionable. <laughs> I had somebody coming over. I was just play, I was playing Deep House and somebody came up and said, you got any rock music? No, fuck off. <laughs> Fucking rock music. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't do requests? No, I don't, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna play what I want to listen to. <laughs> Fuck everybody else. I don't care. <laughs> I just I, I was giving some top speakers them uh, Lisa speakers L I S A speakers. So I just thought I'd give them a test, and I don't want to rock through them. There's some fucking banging tunes. They were nice speakers. They were very nice. They were yeah. very nice. Yeah, I could have done with bigger hand luggage. <laughs> <laughs> Stole them. <laughs> borrowed them. Oh, borrowed. <laughs> so um, yeah, we had um, a fantastic time. In, in NAM with AES and uh, I think I'd just like to sort of mention the AES as we, as soon as we're talking about home studios and what a great way of meeting other people they are Oh yeah, I mean the thing is we got involved with, with the AES because specifically I think as we're getting older I'll speak for myself as I'm yes. getting older because you, you don't get older You are a gentleman, older. Yes, you? yes. <laughs> As I'm getting older, you don't get any older um, Not when you get to my I, age. I, th- I think <laughs> I think we've got a responsibility to the younger generation to help them achieve what they want to achieve, which is why we've been working with them to try and bring EDM into the AES, which we ran, obviously, the, we were chairs of the, the 147th convention yes. in New York. Um, we're also chairs of the next one, aren't we, as yes. well? My idea is, is that... In order to make it big in this industry, as we've been talking about with Mm. Billie Eilish and all that, you've got to have the contacts. You can't just sit at home, write a record, release it and think, bang, yeah, 
I'm, I'm going to be famous because it doesn't work like that. You've got to make contacts. And it's something I, I learned a long time ago that if, without making these contacts, you, you're just pissing into the void. You're not going to get anywhere. So I was hoping to kind of bring EDM musicians together under kind of like the, the Audio Engineering Society, give them kind of a membership and a base to go to where they can all make contacts and they can all talk to each other. Because I know there's there's AD, the Amsterdam Dance Event and the Brighton Music Conference and things like that, but they don't have a membership. And I think if, if we can bring these artists off their asses, out of the fucking bedrooms and actually meeting and talking with other engineers of other genres, not just dance music. But I think that's important. You're yeah. mentioning that, that we, the, the, they're talking to people who make different music because having different music inspires yourself, oh, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, you, you and I both listen to a vast variety of music, and I'll even say that I have like most probably smooth FM on in my car at times because it's different music. It, it inspires you to... Oh, definitely. Move forward, doesn't it? But, um, and, and the AES, they're, they're not a, a toy brigade. You know what I mean? It's no. not a plastic population in there. I mean, you got to think that they've come up with AES EBU, which is the digital standard. They came up with MADI, AES 10, which yeah. is another digital standard. They introduced CD to us. Do you know what I mean? Uh, the AES 67, I think it is, which is audio over IP. So this is a big fucking organisation. And the, the impression that, that a lot of people have had, me included, yes. is that it's full of crusty old blokes who run recording studios and, and just work with rock music, <laughs> which does seem the case because I was asked to play rock. Yes. But the, um, Colleen, the, the, the yeah. executive director, she's brilliant and I think she's really helped kind of bring it in and help develop and, and help us. She's moving it forward. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's making it, it doesn't stand still. To bring more EDM musicians in because I think, as I say, we've got a responsibility to these guys to help them achieve their goals and I, I want to express that you can't achieve it if you're sat on your ass at home and that's all you do in your bedroom. Yeah. You've got to get your ass out and you've got to make contacts because without making contacts, you're fucked. You're not going to get anywhere. No. And you can say that from experience. I mean, you've been in this industry a long time. You, you started in your bedroom I did, yes. Making music. I did, So, yeah. you know, you, you know that you need to go and contact people, um, meet other, you know, professionals. Yeah, because, well, I mean, when I was working in the bedroom, I, you know, I, I was doing tracks, I was getting impressed to, to uh, dub plates, which you'd only play 50 times or 40 times or something like that. I used to get it uh, pressed to a dub plate in Manchester by these two uh -huh. Jamaican guys. Every time you went down, they were always on the smoke. It was hilarious. <laughs> but you take your track down, you, you know, can you kind of put this on here? Here's me dat tape, because it... That back then, digital audio yeah. tape, and they press it to it, and I took it to the Hacienda, and it, 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 I got to know the DJs there, and I think that was a major development because when you got to know like Graham Massey and John De Silva and things like, that, and you, you kind of grew from there, and you get to meet more people of labels, and and without that, I don't think I would have progressed anywhere. I think I still would have been sat in my bedroom. I mean, obviously, I had to make a lot of sacrifices. I did an interview a couple of years ago where I got quite slated, didn't I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I was a mechanic and I thought, look, if I want to do music, I've got to take this shit seriously. And I quit my job. Uh -huh. We've got to express this to people that if you want to make it in this industry, it's hard work. And even now, what, 16, 17 hours a day we're doing in the studio? Oh, yeah, I mean, I, it's, you know, I was just going to say that even now, we're, you know, like you say, we're still working hard. We don't let it up. We put the hours in. There's things that you know, we don't maybe say buy the, you know, certain things because I would probably rather buy a piece of kit, but that's so that's choice. But like you say, it's not a case of somebody's just given us this studio. We've worked for this studio and spend our heart and soul on it. It yeah, isn't just... Th this is one of the reasons why, why I always tend to say to people that you, you, there's two things in life. You've got a job or a career. A job is something you get paid to go to because you wouldn't do it otherwise. A career is something you will go to, get paid fucking peanuts, but you do it because you love it. Yeah. And this is a career because you spend so long doing this, so many hours, 16, 17 hours a day, non-stop. You, you just put so much into it. You've got to love it because if you don't love it, you're just going to get thrown out. No, I look at this, the situation. I mean, you trained. You you could have earned good money as a mechanic, um, which is you know one of your original training you know ways of uh, earning income. I'm healthcare professional by history, and but yeah, you know, we've both given those things up 
to do the music. Well, yeah, we've risked it all, pretty much. Yeah. It's what you do. You risk it all to make fucking music. And but I wouldn't change that. Oh, I wouldn't change and it. I, I would, ins- I would hopefully, it would inspire other people to do what we've done because we do love what we do and we are very fortunate. But I think we're fortunate because we've risked things. I think, I think chance favours the prepared mind. I think you make your own luck. I don't think you have lucky breaks. I think you've got to make that luck. You've got to put yourself out there, which, again, is our contact thing, isn't it? Which is why yeah. we're, we're, we're pulling it all into the AES because we want people to contact one another and to make it. Yeah. I think there's some very talented people out there and maybe you know being part of something like that will help them. Further yeah. their career. Yeah. Yeah, which is what they deserve. You know what I mean? If, if you put that work in, you deserve to be noticed. I think that's to round up what we've been chatting about today is... I think they've made a, a great achievement. Um, oh, no Billie doubt. Eilish yeah, yeah. is a fantastic, it's a fantastic achievement. And it is a good way to promote home studios. Um, of sorts. As I said, there's a very thin line to what a home studio is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, full but credit to them. That's they've done what a great I mean. job. Full credit to them. Full credit to the team behind them. Yeah. I think that's something that needs recognition. Yeah. And also, I think it's inspiring that. We can achieve things. We need the full picture when we're being told we can achieve things. So mm-hmm. we need to know that maybe we need to not just be in our bedroom. We need to go out, meet people. Whatever we need to way make we, Whatever way we do that, whether it's through lucky breaks through people we know personally or because we go out and make contacts through groups. And I, I should mention here as well, when we're talking about contacts, email is no good. Email's yeah. bullshit. Everybody ignores emails. You know. I, I'll be honest. I don't. It's Messenger. I mean, Facebook. Yeah. I mean, oh, mess, I mean, or LinkedIn. Get here's 600, my track. Yeah, six hundred <laughs> emails a day. Well, do you know what this? Here's my track. <laughs> Have us. I think that's the music equivalent of a dick pic. It do you is. know? You kind of get it. Listen to my track. Why? What reason are you giving me to listen to this? Beyond listen to it's my track. I'm great. It's, it's better that I get more of them than you because I'm female. <laughs> What, what dick pics or music? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get any dick pics yet. I've just got the music equivalent of that with a lot of fucking tracks. Well, listen to my track. Listen how great I am. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Nobody. You've got to. <laughs> Why are you laughing about dick pics now? <laughs> well, I don't understand it. Here's a pic of my dick. What, what do you want me to do with that? <laughs> But, but I think it, the contact has to be physical. I'm not talking about dicks now, but the contact has to be physical. You have to go out. You have to make that physical contact with people, shake their hands, meet them face to face. And then when you do email them, they're more interested in actually, oh, I met you. You're a sound guy or a sound girl or whatever. I'm, you know, this is great. I will have a listen to your track yeah. rather than this bullshit of... I've done a track, listen to it, and it's like, well, who the fuck are you? Yeah. Why should I take, like, five minutes out of my time to listen to it and give you feedback? I mean, do people walk in cafes now with ghetto blasters, play it, and just say, where does everybody think of my track? They say, fuck off, get out. <laughs> so, moving forward and you know, just rounding things off for today, um, because we've got lots of work to get on with. <laughs> <laughs> You can't sift through your dick pics, have you? Is it because you're jealous? <laughs> no, I'm not. I promise you I'm not. It's okay, I just redirect them to you now. <laughs> oh, um I I hope people are inspired by the you know what's been said and you know We'll move forward. Yeah, do be inspired by know, Billy, uh, uh, Eilish, Eilish. Billy Ellie. Be inspired by you know it was it was a good track. It yeah. was done. It's clever. But you got to also admit that the guy's a good musician as well. well this so is what I mean. mean. It's yeah. you're a good musician. Um, so you've got the, the, the you know the, somebody there who's worked hard and had a good team behind them. If you know, and it's all been published well. So go on, go and do all your own music is what I would say. But make the right contacts. Don't think it's just going to sit in your bedroom and then you're going to do it. 